Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And now it's time to start building our own Linux containers on Proxmox. So let's get started. As we are building more to our Proxmox Media Center, even though with the use of Proxmox helper script, there are some things that are missing in that that we would have to build ourselves. Namely, what we're gonna be installing today will be called Flare Solver, which is an app to bypass Cloudflare DDoS guard. So a lot of our indexers actually use Cloudflare as a front end. Now this tutorial will also show you the way how to make your own Linux containers. So you don't necessarily have to install Flare Solver, but it could serve as a guide for any services that you plan to install in the future. Anyway, let's jump into the desktop. Now here's the application that we're gonna be installing called Flare Solver, and you can actually get this from GitHub, and I'll leave the link down in the description below. And it shows you hey, Flare Solver is a proxy server to bypass Cloudflare and DDoS guard protection. And it has uh, a bunch of other stuff down here on what it uses and how it uses it, like Selenium is the Python module, and uh, Chrome drivers, so it probably needs Chrome or Chromium. So we'll get through this in a little bit, but let's jump into our Proxmox. Now, I do have two test machines, but I'm not gonna be using those. I'm actually gonna be building one from scratch. This way you could just follow along. But before we do anything, on our last video, I actually did not show how much resources we are currently using with all these containers running, even on a low-end machine like what we have right here, which is the Zima Blade. Only about using 2.5 gigs or 34% of the RAM that we have out of the eight gigs of RAM. And it's actually doing pretty good on what we have as far as resources go, being that we have minimal resources and it's not a very fast CPU, as you can see, the Celeron J3455, it's still crunching away. All right, to start, let's jump into our create CT on the top right. And wow, we're up to 10 already. And I'm gonna call this Flare Solver with two R's. And we're gonna pop in a password over here and we could add a tag if we want. And the one that we've been using is Proxmox Helper Script, which if you use this, it'll actually maintain the blue or you could add other stuff and it'll change the color. You see how it's like pink as soon as I type in there. So it's really up to you, but I'm gonna leave that tag in there. Hit next. The template we're gonna be using is uh, Debian 11. We could use Debian 12. I found Debian 11 to work better just in general uh, for our containers. For the disk, we could use eight gigs of storage. It actually does not require much. And here's the biggest difference between using a VM and a container. It's the resources that it consumes. As far as VM goes, you might need a minimum at least 20 gigs, uh, four gigs of RAM or two gigs of RAM for a Linux operating system, and a bunch of other stuff to emulate, which reduces the speed of the virtual machine itself. While container uses a lot of the host specs, so you don't need a lot of storage because everything's pre-installed in the host. Uh, eight gigs of storage is definitely more than enough for what we're doing today. CPU, I'll leave as one. We could use two. As a matter of fact, Chromium does take a lot of resources. You might want to up this to two. But in our case, I'm just going to leave it as one because we don't have that much resources. Uh, 512, 512 is perfect. Uh, network, this is where we're going to change to vmbr1 and we're going to do dhcp and we'll call this ethel1 that's fine and next next and then finished now i'm going to let this create give or take what 30 seconds a minute maybe less depending on the speed of your cpu but this will be done as soon as this says task okay all right there we have it task okay that took maybe less than 30 seconds and now we could go to our flare solver and console and we're gonna start this right up and start building it. And this is what I like about building these things. I actually rather enjoy it more because I could make it mold to the way I want and get it to the way I need it. So once this starts up, we're gonna jump into root and the password. We could always make a user if you want, but in my case, I'm just gonna leave it like this. And I am gonna first get app update. That is fine. We've got 48 packages that can be upgraded and we could just leave this as normal. Now, as far as Flare Solver goes, if you scroll down a little bit, they should have a Linux install. There you go, from source code, which is what we're gonna be doing. You can technically download their release and just run it off that way, but I'm just gonna get it. And they do have an option for installing it on Docker as well, which is the normal way I would normally install this because it's so much easier. But since we are creating a container, I try to minimize it without having a second container, like container to Docker and then another container. That's resources I don't need to use. So I'm just gonna build this from source. Now we do need Python 3.11, Chrome or Chromium, uh, XVFB, and PIP. That's about it. 
All right, so what we're gonna do is jump over to Python test and we're gonna add all that stuff in. So we're gonna need, let me clear the screen. If I make this bigger, it looks so weird. Like, I don't know if that's like a, the best way to do it. I'll just leave it like this for now and see. So Flare Solver, we're gonna do apt install Python because that's what it's need. A Python 3 actually, 3.11. We're gonna need Git so we could get that stuff. We're also gonna need our Chromium. We can use Chrome, but I prefer Chromium. XVFB, that's another one. And pip, so Python 3-pip. Okay, hit enter. I'm gonna let this all install in one time. It's gonna cost me 980 megabytes, which is not too bad. And again, depending on the speed of your computer, this might take a while, this might not. So also dependent on the speed of your internet as well. While we are going through this, I'm gonna pop over to the GitHub of Flare Solver. And one of the things that they didn't mention is that we provide an example system, the unit flare solver service, which is unavailable. I cannot find it in this resource at all. Maybe they got rid of it, um, or it might be even in the releases, but I'm not too sure as far as the source codes go, I can't find it anywhere. I looked, I downloaded this Git somewhere else and I did a search for it and I could not find this actual service uh, file for system D. So what I ended up doing was creating my own. I actually now have a repository called Linux system D services, which I will start adding more and more services as I go down the road, but it's pretty much the general sense of what we have for starting a service. So in Linux theory, services are not like windows where you can just put it into a task or put it into a folder and just have it auto start uh, in our system d we actually have to create these files called services files now in the first part we will have the unit the name of the file and after this is very important the after is tells you when to start this particular service so one of the big thing is network target that means this will only start if network is started first so if you are creating any software that doesn't require the network, you can actually remove this line and it'll start up even sooner. So it depends on the placement of what you want. And because we are hosting something, uh, which is Flare Solver and requires a IP and a port, the network target has to be available first. Then you have your working directory, which this needs to be changed to wherever you downloaded uh, Flare Solver. In my case, I just left it as root. Uh, restart on failure, just like Docker. Uh, restart within five seconds. The type is simple. Uh, execution command, which is our Python 3, and then our file that we need to um, execute. And then on uh, the kill signal would be sig int timeout, and then system, and then wanted by multi-user. So that's another thing you want to be careful for. Most or almost all programs are multi-user target. Uh, you can go for single user target as well, but well, generally it's just multi-user target. And that makes up basically the service file. All right, let's see if this is done. All right, it is. So let me go to Flare Solver right over here, grab this URL. I'm gonna copy that with Control C and clear the screen again. And we're gonna do git clone and pop that in. And there we have it, we have our Flare Solver. Now in the Flare Solver, we do need to do requirements right here. And it's in their commands as well. If you go back into their readme file, uh, it basically says you have to pip install the requirements. So we're gonna do pip install dash r requirements, hit enter. And this will install the stuff that we need like Selenium, uh, functions, uh, stuff like that. So we're gonna let this run and I'm not too sure how long this would be, maybe a few minutes. It's pretty quick. It's only got a couple of modules that it needs to install. And there we have it. That's all done. Hopefully this isn't really an error. I'm going to try running the program now. So let's do Python 3 period slash src and then flare solver dot py. And it runs. Perfect. Launching web browser, which is Chromium. And again, because of this, this actually uses quite a few resources. All right, so the port is 8191, and I don't know what the IP is on this, which I should have grabbed a second ago, but we're gonna head back into our WRT. Go to status overview, and let's take a look at what Flare Solver would be right here. 179, okay. So we're gonna copy that IP address. We need that locally in this system. We're gonna hop back over to Prowler, and in here we're gonna go to indexers, and add the flare solver. Click on that 
and we are going to change that port i mean the ip address to the new ip 10.50.50.179 again if you're confused with this ip you got to watch the previous video on our openwrt video and let's test this and as soon as i try to test this incoming request perfect detected it's coming from 156 which is our prowler ip address and everything is okay we should have a green check actually let me test it again and then you will see a green check everything's working which is good there you go the green check and then we could hit save now this is still in its manual state where you have to bring it up every time which is something we don't want because if it reboots we lose uh, flare solver so what we need to do is cancel out of this or control c i'm going to clear this screen and this is where we're going to build our system service so we're going to do a nano into etc system d and then system and then we're going to call a file called flare solver dot service all right now we could go into my little service tab which i should talked about earlier grab this we're just going to copy this and then we're going to paste it in this terminal and there we have it now because all my stuff is still in root i don't have to change any of the folders but if you did install it somewhere else remember to change that Control x save this buffer yes hit enter and just to double check i'm going to do a uh, pwd and yes the current directory is root slash flare solver and it's the same thing perfect and now we could do system ctl enable flare and there you go if you hit tab it auto completes because it knows it's in that file so we're going to do flare solver it's going to create a symbolic link and then now i'm going to hit up arrow and go back and do start to start the service itself now just to make sure it, everything started up correctly we could go back and go to status and there we have it chromium started ports opened and let's double check it we're going to go back into our uh, prowler go to flare solver hit test and if it's a green check mark, then we know it's good to go. There we have it. Save. Now we're going to do one more test just to make sure everything is working. We're going to hit Q to get out of that. Clear. And we're just going to do a reboot. Now we have to make sure it survives the reboot. And once it does, we could test it one more time. Then we know everything is all complete and we are done with this. We, we pretty much built our own Linux container. All right, there we go, it just started up. I'm gonna give it a few more seconds because I think it might be running Chromium in the background and I'm just gonna not even log in. I'm just gonna leave the screen like this. Go to proxies, flare solver, and then let's go to test. If it's a green check mark, then we are good to go. If it doesn't work, it'll actually be a red X. Okay, there we go. We have our own little service all set up. And then now if I go over to summary, this doesn't take much resources 66 megabytes of memory usage and it doesn't use much uh, cpu resources but watch this if i was to put this off to the side grab this and drag it out and you can see the resources right over here i'm going to click flare solver test you're going to automatically see it pops up you see that it goes up to 99 percent uses about 200 megs of ram and then it drops back down so that's basically the test. So if you have a lot of indexers that uses uh, Flare Solver, just be mindful of that because it actually does take up a bunch of resources just to run the initial process of getting the cookie. Last but not least, the only thing we have to do is go into options and make sure this starts up on boot up. Hit OK. And that is it. Anytime when your system reboots, it's going to run Flare Solver as well. And that's how you would create a container in your Linux Proxmox. It's basically a server install of any Linux that you're doing. You don't have a desktop, you don't have a start menu or anything like that. It's just the bare root uh, console version of any Linux. Now you don't have to do this with Debian. You could use this with Arch Linux. You could do this with Rocky, Alpine, whatever you want, whatever you're comfortable with. I'm more comfortable with Debian or Ubuntu. That's why I actually chose it to use this way. But if you wanted to save a little bit more resources, Alpine is a great change of pace as well. Anyway, that is it for this video. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.